Shrimad Bhagavatam. Canto 8. Chapter 20. Text 23. 8 2023. Rasam. Ashtangri Tali Tapadayor Ashtangri Tali Tapadayor Mahim Mahindhan Hindran Purushasya Jaghaya Patitrino Janoni Vishva Morte Urvorganam Marutam Indra Senam Rasam Achashtangri Talita Padayor Mahim Mahindran Purushasya Jangraha Jangrayo Patitruno Janoni Vishva Morte Urvorganam Marutam Indra Senaha Rasam Achashtangri Talita Padadayor Mahim Mahindra Purushasya Jagrahagrayo Planetary system. The Lord planetary system. Achashta. Achashta. Observed. Observed. Angri tale. tale. Beneath the feet. The beneath the feet. Or on the soul. Or on the soul. Atta. Atta. Thereafter. Thereafter. Padayoho. Padayoho. On the feet. On the feet. Mahim. Mahim. The surface of the land. The surface of the land. Mahidran. Mahidran. The mountains. The mountains. Purushasya. Purushasya. Of the giant. 
personality of Godhead. Of the giant personality of the Godhead. Jangraha Yoho. Yoho. On the calves. On the calves. Patitrinaha, Patitrinaha, the flying living entities, the flying living entities, Jānuni, Jānuni, on the knees, Vishvamurtehe, on the form of the gigantic Lord, of the form of the gigantic Lord, Ovoho, on the thighs, on the thighs, Ganam Marutam, Ganam Marutam, varieties of air. Of the Indra Senaha, <coughs> Bali Maharaj, Bali Maharaj, who had obtained the soldiers of King Indra, who had obtained the soldiers of King, Indra, and who is situated in the post of Indra. And who has <coughs> the post of Indra? Translation: <coughs> Thereafter, Bali Maharaj, who was occupying the seat of King Indra. <coughs> could see the lower planetary systems such as Rasatala on the soles of the feet of the Lord's universal form. He saw on the Lord's feet the surface of the globe, on the surface of his calves, all the mountains, on his knees the, vari the, the various birds and on his thighs the varieties of air. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> the universal situation is described herein in regard to the complete constitution of the Lord's gigantic universal form. The study of this universal form begins from the soul. Above the soles are the feet, above the feet are the calves, above the calves are the knees, above the knees are the thighs. Thus, the parts of the universal body, one after another, are described herein. The knees are the place of birds, and above that are varieties of air. The birds can fly over the mountains and above the birds are varieties of air. A little complex, huh? My thought is just to discuss a little bit the principle of and the different descriptions of the universal form. What is the universal form? Is it eternal? Or is it temporary? On the one hand, because everything comes from the source of everything, it may be manifest and not be manifest, but the form or universal form is one of the, the personality of Godhead's forms. Sometimes manifest, sometimes not. So in other words, what I'm getting at is there's the non-difference and difference feature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching. In one sense, everything that exists because it's from the Supreme Lord is part of the Supreme Lord or of the Supreme Lord and therefore is godly, everything. Or another way of saying the same thing is material means forgetfulness of the source. And spiritual means remembrance of the source. And going back to Canto, one, Canto 2, Chapter 1, there's a different description of the universal form. It's the same universal form, but seen through a different lens, and it's describing the features of that which is created and depicting that which is created as the universal form, which is distinct from the way it's described here and even 
somewhat different than the way it's described in the Bhagavad Gita. It's to, so, is it possible for the one object to be viewed in a different way, you could say, through a different lens and described accurately? Same thing. The answer is yes, of course. <clears throat> because the universal form or anything that one may contemplate or see or regard has different features. Certainly, <clears throat> the previous verse says the universal form is filled with six opulences. So what does that mean? It means it's a form of Bhagavan. It's a feature of Bhagavan because only Bhagavan has the six opulences. Of course, there's degrees of manifesting those opulences. But Bhagavan possesses them in, in full. And whether exhibiting them or not exhibiting them in fullness, Bhagavan is one who has them. <clears throat> and the feature, here's something interesting. I, I find it interesting. <clears throat> There's a verse in Padma Purana that's very similar to the verse of Srimad Bhagavatam that says Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam. And that verse, Krishna is to Bhagavayam, Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam, means that Krishna is the original source of everything. Krishna is the original source of everything. So in that sense, because prior to that verse, it's a list of the avatars of Vishnu, Krishna is in the list of avatars of Vishnu. And then Vyasadeva circles back around and says of all these ete cha angsa kala, of all these different angsas and kalas, or portions, or a portion of a plenary portion of Vishnu, Krishna is the source of them all. Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam. Not included in that list is the universal form. That's Canto 1, Chapter 3. Canto 2, Chapter 1 includes a description of the universal form. And <clears throat> the stages of God realization progress in Canto 2 meditation on the universal form. Specifically, the narration says, Sukadeva Goswami's narration says, one must, one will, let go of that contemplation and take the next one. And that's Super Soul, Lord of the Heart. And then one will let go of that contemplation. It's not like the universal form just dissolved or Paramatma dissolved. It's just the focus of meditation than to the personal feature. So they're all Krishna conscious, universal form, super soul, and Bhagavan, the personal feature of the Supreme. And rendering devotional service unto that personal feature of the Supreme, of course, that's the overall teaching of the whole, entire Bhagavatam. At the same time, there are these different features of the source of everything. So, Bali is getting a, a darshan of Vamana's feature of the universal form. And who can say what, what that must have felt like to Bali Maharaj? Because on the one hand and on the other hand, on the one hand, Bali Maharaj <coughs> being born in a Daitya family, uh, he has Daitya-like 
genes or, or tendencies or features within his birth. And on the other hand, he's a great devotee. And it's for that reason that Lord Vamana came and showed a form of the Supreme Lord, begging charity, etc., etc. And because Bali was a virtuous king, he's ready to give charity. Whatever the dwarf Brahmana wanted. So anyway, he's now the dwarf Brahmana, Vamana, is standing before him, now simultaneously showing his universal form. In other words, I'm not just a dwarf Brahman, but the source of everything. And here's this depiction of everything. Let's go back and read the translation. Previous verse 22. Bali Maharaj, along with the priests, acharyas, and members of the assembly, observed the Supreme Personality of Godhead's universal body, which was full of six opulences. The, that body <coughs> contained everything within the universe, including all the gross material elements, the senses, the sense objects, the mind, intelligence, and false ego, the various kinds of living entities, and the actions and reactions of the three modes of material nature. In other words, it wasn't something that exists within the universe that wasn't displayed by the universal form. Which is kind of mind-boggling because seeing everything in one place at the same time, it's like circuit overload. Your fuse is gonna blow. But he, Vamana, gave Bali the eyes to see as much as Krishna gave the eyes to Arjuna to see the universal form. Which is a feature of the personality of God. It just says Krishna manifested at Arjuna's request. <coughs> Vamana is manifesting for his own purposes before Bali Maharaj with, a, with a, a similar effect, not just a dwarf Brahman, or in, in ca case of Krishna and Arjun, it's not just my friend, my cousin, my friend, the Supreme Personality of God. And so when Bali Maharaj understood, in addition to the virtue of giving charity to a Brahmana, He's now understanding he's the, he's the personality of Godhead. Who can show this? You've probably heard. If someone says, I am God, you can ask him, my dear sir, please show me the universe, your, your universal form. And the person may then say, you don't have the eyes to see, so you can't see my universal form. Then the devotee can say, if you're, the, if you're God, you can certainly give the eyes to see. <laughs> Please show your universal form. Vamana isn't being challenged by Bala Maharaj to you know, prove that you're God. He's proving he's God, showing his universal form right in front of him. So the emphasis in the purport is brief. It's meditation upon starting up with the soles, then the feet, then the calves, then the thighs, as rising from the bottom going up like it's recommended in Canto Two. One should see the deity form from the feet first. Put, uh, arti is offered to the feet first. Darshan is to the feet first. It's just, just standard meditation. Now, we may not, when we see, come before the deity, look at the feet first. 
but that's what's recommended. It's just a procedure. And that's what's happening here. It, you know, the, the, the speaker, Shukadeva Goswami, is narrating Bali Maharaja's experience, and his meditation is starting from the soles to the feet, etc. So it's, it's, a, it's a suitable sequence and exactly the description may differ in another description which is quite okay. In other words, above the birds is varieties of air. So birds are flying in the air. So they're within the air. But above the birds are varieties of air. It doesn't detail it, at least in the Bhaktivedanta purports. But they're varieties of air. I'll just go, say one other thing and then see if there's some discussion. A while ago I was visiting in Alachua. In Alachua there's a number of Prabhupada disciples and very senior devotees and very learned persons. So somehow the discussion, the, the verse was speaking about Anila. Anila is one of those varieties of air. And sometimes synonymous, but sometimes not synonymous. There's uh, Vayu, which is another term that refers to the air. And then there's Prana, because that was within the verse as well. So the discussion was going, what's the difference? Is there a difference between air that we breathe and the life air within the body. Reasonable question. And there was no immediate answer amongst the learned persons in the room. And with some research, primarily with the, the assistance of Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj, he referred to Madhvacharya's commentary on Vedanta Sutra or Brahma Sutra where he gives the following explanation. Now this is Madhvacharya who has <coughs> as a partial incarnation of Vayu who is also known as Mukya Pran. Mukya Pran is the source of all prana the origin of all prana is mukya prana. And from mukya prana comes prana within the bodies of living entities, which is not exactly the same. There's a connection. He doesn't detail what that connection is. But life air within the body is not just inhaling and exhaling. There's air, the air comes in the body. So that's from the lungs. But aside from the lungs and the air of the lungs and exchange of oxygen and all those other things that happen on, you know, within the lungs of a, a beast or a human or whatever, a tree, there's life air. And they're, they're related, but they're not identical not to one to one correlation. So this, that's a detail, this statement that there's varieties of air. There's varieties of air. And life air is not exactly the varieties of air. It's not, not exactly not either. <coughs> Just like Anyway, it's a detail. Just like in, uh, I was just reading yesterday, Prabhupada was describing the duration of life. We're allotted a certain number of breaths, and when that number is met, then death comes. 
So one of the, Prabhupada was describing, one of the systems of prolonging life, not one becomes, gets eternal life, but prolonging life is assisted by pranayama, which means controlling prana within the body to the point where the yogis can live for a long, long time just based upon the life airs within the body and suspending the ingoing and outgoing air. For example, prajetas, they meditated underwater for, I forget, length of time, long, long time. And you can't meditate under Shobari Muni. You can't meditate underwater and still breathe. So it's a, it's a way of testing or displaying and pre preventing some cheating. But the, the purpose, one of the purposes, you know, the intermediate purpose at least, is prolonging life. It's certainly a form of tapasya. But it's a certain form of tapasya that minimizes the ingoing and outgoing breath, suspends the life air within the body, and in that state of concentration, to be able to do that, ultimately it's concentration on the Supreme. Prabhupada gave the example, this is a room conversation, he gave the example of a bank balance. Suppose you have X in the bank. If you don't spend it, it'll just sit there you're allotted similarly a certain number of breaths. So passionate life makes one's breathing go faster and it decreases the duration of life because your breaths are, are used up. I mean, there's other ideas about exercise and breathing, etc., etc., but the bank balance is being reduced as far as that particular measurement of life duration. Anyway, that's just a detail about the thighs of the Supreme Lord. Because the, the, the Sanskrit word that's used is maruta, maruta. Varieties of air, like maruti. Varieties of air. And everyone's seeing the same thing, and how it's impacting everyone and how it's impacting Bali Maharaj is going to be a little different because he's a very elevated person. They, the others are able to see the same thing he's seeing that's being explicitly described here. But their understanding, how it impacts their consciousness is different, which I guess we'll hear about in the upcoming verses. pretty hard to have a discussion on the universal form with such, such a short purport. Let's see if there's some discussion. Wow. There's a very persistent fly. Huh? Same? Yes. So my question is like uh, universal, universal form. Thank you. And uh, Krishna's personal form. They, they both are personal form, right? Well, it's not impersonal. It's personal. It's personal. So, uh, like unless somebody reads Bhagavad Gita, right? Most of the people are attracted more towards that opulent <coughs> universal form because of. Well, I don't know if that's a true statement, that more people are attracted to the opulent universal form than to the two-handed form of Krishna. I don't know if that's a true statement. Well, if, if somebody is more attracted to that opulent form... If, if somebody is, then? Then what is their, their destination? They still get the personal... No, it, it's like Canto 2, Chapter 1. It's f the, the, the explanation given in the commentary is it's to help the person who only has 
the conception or the experience and therefore the conception of matter to take their experience of their of matter and their conception of matter and transform it into a personal conception through seeing a uh, few you know, features of matter. The hills are his stacks of bones, that's, you know, the trees are the hairs on his body and, you know, to connect features of matter or creation with a person. It's just, it, it's an assist to get to the stage of seeing that which you can see, perceiving that which we can perceive in connection with the person. In that sense, it's imaginary, or you can say it's poetic. This means that. You know, it's, it's a standard method of poetry. Something that is, is known is compared to something yet unknown. For the purpose of helping the person evolve a little bit, at least, in conceiving of the source of everything as the Supreme Person, or everything is a person, ultimately. That's a stage which is a little different than what's happening here. It's the same universal form, but it's, the lens is different. Okay. Yes. I'd have to research. I, it, yeah, I can't. It sounds quite familiar, but I'd have to research it before I could say yes or no. He is telling like I mean, we are exactly take the mask off. Oh, sorry. We are reading Srimad Bhagavatam every uh, like verse by verse, and then uh, I think in Canto three, right? When uh, Aditi uh, like you know she Kapil. Aditi Madhavata Devi she she wants to get a son so that that can kill Indra. So even in the, she was bearing a child. Indra tried to kill that, but that cut it in yeah. pieces. But. He's asking, is it true? That's your question. And I, my, my reply is, I'd have to go back and read the section carefully to say, from memory, yes. But I'd have, to, I'd have to, I feel obliged to give a proper answer. That is, that's my memory. My memory isn't so good. Yeah. Yes. Five was there. Yes. And then another five also there. It's the last one is Dhananda. Yeah. All of them five Parga. But that floating prana life is of those things. That is all. Are what? But the prana of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life here yeah. Putting on the prana. Uh, and so, we, what's your point? What's your point? It's a detail. They're just divisions. The source is the same, and they have different functions, and therefore different categories. But they're all prana. It's just different functions of this prana, that prana. Is that... Is that a touching your question? Right. Prana and soul is the same thing. Yeah, no, no. Prana and soul are the same thing? No. Prana helps carry the soul, but the soul is not prana. It's life, air. It's, you know, my understanding is limited. But my understanding is that through the, 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 the Spiritual potency of the soul is transferred to life air 
and life air sustains the soul sustains through the medium of life air but it's not the same that mean like the sun reflects on life well, let's say when the soul leaves the body, what happens to life air? But when the soul is there, the life air, it's like, you know, a, a nimitta. It's a, an object or it's a tool through which the soul acts to, to support and sustain life. The, the, the source of that potency is the soul. And then the instrument is life air. Uh oh. Does that answer your question? They're not the same. You gotta go take the phone call. Is there a connection? Is there a connection? Is there a connection between the the Divya Drishti that is given uh, and also like we read from uh, Brahma Samhita, Premanjana Charita is, there, is that one and the same thing or no, different? No, they're, they're similar but they're not one and the same thing. Divya Drishti, supposing just like here in this verse specifically this one, that one, the other one, they're all seeing the same thing. It's not Premanjana. It's Divya Drishti. They're given the power to see something extraordinary. But it's not arising from Premanjana. Clear? Yes. You have something? No, no. No? Okay. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Before coming here I was in Houston and the devotees in Houston very kindly supplied me with some Radha Nila Madhava Mahaprasadam. I'd like to distribute them.